Mario lives in Super Nintendo World, located in Universal Studios Japan, or USJ, as it's called locally. While the name implies more Nintendo properties are on the way, for now, it's the gang from the Mushroom Kingdom holding things down. Thanks for coming along with me on this journey. Please subscribe for more. Like the video to help my content reach more people. A little goes a long way. Thank you. The land is much smaller than you'd think. You can very easily walk around its entirety in less than 10 minutes, but there's this verticality to it that makes it feel very different. Everything is tiered on different layers, giving the whole land a unique sense of space, like it was built for exploration. The two main attractions, or rides, present are the Mario Kart ride inside Bowser's Castle and Yoshi's Adventure. Let's take a look at Bowser's Castle. The queue has some nice details and theming, but at times it does feel a bit empty. The idea for this ride is that you're here to help Mario and the gang defeat Bowser and his Koopalings the only way they know how, via go-karts and turtle shells. The main concept of the ride might make or break it for some. It's mainly an augmented reality, or AR, game. You have to put on a special plastic Mario hat. You can adjust the hat-helmet hybrid easily enough, and it even fit my massive noodle. Once you get to a certain point, they'll show you how to attach the glasses onto your Mario helmet. The glasses are attached to your ride vehicle, and you slide them on and off as you board and leave. I don't have footage from the ride itself because it's mostly in your glasses. The set pieces are a bit... bland? Uh, they do the job as backdrops, but the main draw is looking around, aiming your vision at Koopas, and beating the ever-loving snot out of them with turtle shells. The head movement for aiming might be another negative for some, especially if you're prone to motion sickness. I didn't seem to have any problems when I rode it twice, but be aware of the conditions you're getting yourself into. Yoshi's Adventure, to contrast, is so much more relaxed. You go through a queue reminiscent of the Yoshi's Island games before boarding your Yoshi to play a simple, find the colored Yoshi's game. You hit the button on your ride vehicle when you see the Yoshi and that's it. You get to spend a few parts rolling outside, enjoying some desert ambience, and a pretty fantastic view of the area. Both rides give you coins for the land's game system, which we'll discuss later. But now, let's talk merch. Bowser's Castle has the time-honored tradition of spitting you out from the ride and directly into a gift shop. There are two main shops in the land, with a few carts here and there outside to sell small goods and power-up bands. The Mario Kart shop has some great Mario Kart-style merch, from plushies to shirts to boxed snacks and expensive watches. The other Mario shop, themed to a factory, has much of the same with a few differences here and there. There are many exclusive pieces in these shops, but if you can't get into Super Nintendo Land, uh, do know that the large gift shop near the entrance of USJ does have most of the Mario merchandise, so all is not lost. For food, there are two main areas, a snack counter near Yoshi's Adventure and Kinopio's Cafe. The Yoshi's Adventure stand sells drinks and snacks, such as two different styles of lassi and some delicious manju, or steamed buns. I ended up trying the Koopa Shell steamed bun, filled with cheese and yakisoba, which are grilled soba noodles. It was cheesy, carby, and delightful. I highly recommend stopping here for a quick bite. Kinopio's Cafe is the sit-down restaurant. To enter, you first need to get a return time from the worker out front. This will give you a specific time to join the line. Once in line, you can see some fantastic theming, with the main chef himself appearing on the big screen to entertain you as you wait for your food. To clarify, Kinopio is the Japanese name for Toad, so when this opens in America, it'll likely be Toad's Cafe. There are a ton of choices, and all look pretty delicious. It was hard to choose. I wanted Peach's special cake from Mario 64, but that's an honest-to-goodness cake for four people, so I had to pass. I ended up getting Luigi's Curry Burger, a drink, and a question mark block tiramisu. 
With the Mario and Luigi burgers, you get to keep a little hat pick stuck in your burger. Bonus merch. The dining room has dynamic windows, showing the toads milling about with the occasional invasion by Bowser's airship to mess things up. It's a lovely place with decent food and air conditioning to cool down if you're visiting during a hot summer day. There's also a popcorn stall where you can load up your popcorn buckets as well. The best bucket they sell here is the Superstar, hands down. Is that all? Of course not. I'd be remiss if I didn't talk about all the games available to play. The thing to remember is that everything in Super Nintendo World is a game. Everything. You'll be earning coins and climbing the leaderboard the whole day as you look for hidden interactive spots, play small games outside, and ride attractions. The thing here is that, in order to take advantage of this, you need to link your Universal Studios Japan app with the Power Up Band, a slap bracelet style accessory you can buy at the park or in advance for 3800 yen. You scan the QR code on the back of your band with your USJ app, and you're off to the races. I chose not to do this because, well, I didn't want to pay the money for the experience, as I didn't think I would get much out of it as a solo traveler. If you're with a group and feeling competitive, this might be an option for you. There are many fun-looking games out there you can get in on, including one where you try to activate a POW block at just the right time to hit a ricocheting green turtle shell. One where you try to spin the ground so fast you send a Goomba flying. And one where you try to disarm ringing alarm clocks in the presence of an angry piranha plant. There are a few more indoors, but I was unable to go in due to the lack of a power-up band. Uh, but one looked like a slot machine and the other had a whole wall of mystery going on. It seemed like people were really enjoying that one quite a bit. And what would a theme park be without character meet and greets? Super Nintendo World has meetings with the main Mario 4. You can meet Mario and Luigi in the main center. They will strike some classic blockbusting poses with you as the photographer snaps your photo. Toad is just on the other side, waddling around, trying his best. And Princess Peach is at the gazebo outside her castle. Interesting fact about Peach is that she speaks exclusively in English. She has the American voice and everything. I was a bit surprised, and I'm sure some children were too, uh, when they heard her speak. Now the pricing is a bit uh, unpleasant. See, you'll pay 8,400 yen at the time of publishing to get admission into the park. That's around the same price for the Tokyo Disney parks, depending on the day and their variable pricing. The downside comes with their express tickets, which allow you to skip the lines, uh, much like the Fast Pass at Tokyo Disney Resort. For Super Nintendo World, Yoshi's Adventure appears first in the Fun Ride Ticket Pack, which runs an additional 7,800 yen. If you want Mario Kart Koopa's Challenge, you'll find it in the Backdrop Express Bundle, costing a cool 10,800 yen. On top of that, if you want to interact with just about everything in Super Nintendo World outside of shopping, dining, and riding the attractions, you'll need to shell out another 3,800 yen, bringing your total for a single day for a single person anywhere from 12,200 minimum if you pay for the admission and the power-up band to 23,000 yen if you add the Backdrop Express Pass bundle. Now, I only paid the entry fee, and I didn't pay for any extra experiences. I used the single rider line at the Mario Kart attraction and was able to ride it twice with minimal weight, and was able to ride Yoshi's Adventure once with about an hour wait, because there's no single rider line for this attraction. If you have a bigger party and want to stay all together, you'll be waiting longer for Mario Kart and about the same amount of time for Yoshi's Adventure. If the extra experiences around the land to collect coins and interact with the environment seems appealing to you, then the extra money for the power-up bands may be worth it. For me, it wasn't, but that doesn't mean my situation and tastes will be perfect for everyone out there. Take some time, think it through, and talk to your party to decide what's going to be the best for you. I'm glad I went, and the area, while small, really packs in the activities. If you're a Nintendo diehard, take half a day and take advantage of everything the land offers. If you're just a casual Nintendo fan, the attractions are worth a ride and then you can spend the rest of your day exploring the rest of the park. 
If you enjoyed this video, take a moment to like it and share it with one Koopa kid in your life. Thanks so much. Peace.